The majority of the world's scientists are now agreed, except for a very few people, but the majority agree that um, we are having an incalculable effect on climate at the moment. But while most scientists agree on the effects of global warming, the United States, the superpower of all polluters, is still stopping any international action. It's not worth it, and it's not going to work. And on top of it, global warming doesn't exist, so why try? If we don't try, leading climatologists say we could experience rising sea levels and even more catastrophic weather events. Geography classes at secondary school become much more simple because many nations will no longer be there and have disappeared under the sea. If you remain passive today, the cost of that remaining passive is, is very high in future. And, and, the, and why not take action today? Tonight on Four Corners, in our last program for 1999, we look ahead to the big issue for the new millennium, the impact of global warming why the world's divided on what needs to be done. It's Sunday morning in Greenville, North Carolina. And this congregation is celebrating their survival and mourning their losses in a flood that's claimed more than 50 lives and caused billions of dollars of damage. It's been classified as a one in 500 year weather event. And it's yet another example of the extreme weather the world's been witnessing in recent times. <laughs> The deluge hit North Carolina with such force that the main river in Greenville rose 10 metres above its normal height. And even though it's dropped just as quickly, thousands have been left homeless. The army's been called in to clean up and to keep order, and the local high school has become shelter for hundreds of homeless families. These people have seen a flood that they have not had any records of anything like this as far back as they can go to 500 years. So this was an event that uh, they, was, they were totally unprepared for and totally unexpected. The hurricanes usually passed east of them along the coastal areas of the United States and, and the flooding and damage has kind of been confined there. It's one of the largest uh, operations that they've had in the United States as far as bringing in uh, assistance and workers. I, I've, I've heard it said that we can have more compassion when we see maybe earthquakes or floods or you know such like on television now. We really can you know uh, identify with other people, homeless people. It, it's, it's, it's terrible. And me, I, I'm a Christian. I believe it's just uh, the beginning of sorrow such as it was spoken of in, in the Bible. You know, so we can get modular homes again. Oh, yeah. We can get cars again. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But we can re remanufacture lives again. I thank God, even if your home is destroyed, you are here this morning. Most of the population around Greenville are the descendants of slaves, slaves who gained their freedom at the end of the Civil War and were pioneers in establishing the first African-American towns. They've seen plenty of troubles in the past, and today they're wondering why God has wrought such devastation on them. Praise God. We mourn this morning. We mourn as we celebrate. We mourn as well. All of those who will be burying their dead as soon as graves are dry enough so that they can bury their dead. We 
want to remember them. We really want to remember them. But the suffering sent from heaven may have an earthly origin, the work of human and not divine hands. And maybe now we're reaping what we've sown in the Earth's atmosphere over the past 200 years. The hurricanes will become stronger as ocean surface waters warm up. The waters of the Atlantic are at near record levels of warmth right now. This Hurricane Floyd was the size of Texas. When you looked at it from aerial photographs, it was extraordinarily large. And because of this increase in humidity in the atmosphere, it has dumped these very, very intense rains in North Carolina. So these events we're seeing are precisely consistent with what the scientists have told us we're going to see. The only difference is we're seeing them earlier than they originally projected. This is the Cray T3E900 at the Hadley Centre in England. It's the most powerful climate modelling supercomputer in the world. It divides the Earth into millions of 50 square kilometre units and then analyses climate data from each one, from the top of the stratosphere to the bottom of the oceans. For the past 10 years, it's been building a weather forecast for the 21st century. It uses the past as a guide and then predicts future weather patterns. These computer models show how life on Earth could change if we don't change. Its latest prediction is that by 2050, tropical rainforests will turn to desert. Increasing heat along the equatorial regions is already making some rainforests so dry they can be simply cleared by burning. But when we look at the results from this vegetation model for 2050s, we see a rather dramatic change so that a large area of Amazonia is changed from the dark green rainforest into virtually desert, the grey area. And this obviously has a severe uh, implication for um, the sustainability of, of the forests in that region. In other words, the rainforests of the Amazon, the lungs of the earth, are predicted to choke and die in less than 50 years. It appears it won't be chainsaws and bulldozers that will kill off the largest forest in the world. It will be the slow warming of little more than one degree per decade and a simultaneous drop in rainfall of half a metre that'll see this vital ecosystem perish. Well, the temperature change in the Amazon in this particular model is predicted to be something like seven degrees at 2050, so that's a very large change compared seven to... Seven degrees Celsius. Seven degrees Celsius, yeah. This, this is a large change compared with the global average, and that does illustrate the point that the global average um, hides a lot of regional variation and some regions will warm a lot more than others. All plant life will be affected by these rapid changes in climate. The rainforests which soak up more than a fifth of the world's carbon will become one of the greatest sources of carbon dioxide pollution when they die and decay. And the early warning signs are already here. Even pine forests in Canada are starting to die as the snow line moves further north. Their forests are suffering already because of the increase in temperature. And forests don't like to have that sort of change. And it's the rate of change that's so important. We're talking of a rate of change which is going to be faster than has occurred perhaps for 10,000 years at least. And that rapid rate of change, many ecosystems cannot cope with, particularly trees. And of course humans find it very difficult to cope with too. change the atmosphere and you change life on Earth. The only reason we have a planet to live on at all is because of our unique atmosphere. Without its ability to trap the sun's heat, the Earth would be a frozen wasteland. Our atmosphere is a thin blanket of greenhouse gases, the most important of which is carbon dioxide. But put too much carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere and it's like adding an extra blanket. It'll block the escaping heat and the earth will heat up. 